Video calls are a great way to get together with people from all over without anyone actually having to be in the same place or travel. There's lots of different services that provide video calls, but there's one that stands out. This is Allison from Computers.Mom, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Zoom. Zoom is a great tool. It's free for most purposes. It's really powerful, works on lots of different kinds of computers or phones or tablets, and has a ton of features, but it can be a little overwhelming when you get started. So we're going to focus on four basic things. One, how to get set up. Two, how to join a Zoom call. Three, how calls work. And four, how to host a call of your own. We're going to assume that you're making this video call from a computer. If you have a modern laptop, you probably have a webcam and a microphone and a speaker. A desktop, it's a little more complicated. You may not have the webcam and you might have to hunt around a little bit to find where to plug in a headset so you have better sound. The first step is to sign up for a Zoom account and download the app. So open a web browser that can be Chrome, Firefox, Safari, whatever you prefer, and navigate to zoom.us. Now you don't have to have an account, but it's free and you'll have access to more features if you do. They ask you to enter your work email, but it doesn't have to be a work email. You can use whichever email you prefer. So I enter my email address, click confirm, and Zoom sends me an email. Now I've got to go to my mail. Let's go to the mail program and there it is. To activate the account, I've got to click on the link in this email to prove that this is really my email account. Okay, then it sends me right back to the browser where they want a little bit more information. My first and last name, and I have to create a password. For the demo purposes, I'm just going to use a simple password, but I have to fill all their criteria, at least eight characters, at least one number, at least one letter, and you'll see as I type, when I fill the criteria, then the there they go, they turn green. Now I have to retype the same password to make sure I typed it correctly, and click continue. So now my account's set up, I'm going to save the password because I like to keep track of them in my browser. This page asks you to invite your friends, which we don't need to do, so we'll skip this step. The next step is optional, but it's really useful. Let's test to make sure that we can hear the audio and that the, our voice is coming through on the other end, that the audio works both directions. But in order to start the test meeting, we have to download and install the app, the, the Zoom app. If we click Start Meeting Now, you'll get this page, which is going to be very familiar. And depending on your browser, you may have to click on download and a bunch of permissions like allow it to download and then allow it to install. It's just the normal install procedure that you would do for any program on any computer, however it works on your particular computer. So we're going to go through this process, click continue, agree to everything, and let it install. Now you can see the Zoom app down in the bottom in the taskbar. And now all we have to do is sign in to the app and we're ready to go. Notice that I'm going to keep signed in so I don't have to type the password every time I want to use the app. It's a feature of modern operating systems that you're going to be asked for permission for practically everything, using your microphone, using your webcam, using your speakers. So expect to have a lot of pop-ups asking for permission. Now we've got the app ready to go, but we never did our testing. So we've got to somehow get back to that page that was the testing page. If you don't find it easily, you can always go to zoom.us forward slash test in a browser. So I'm going to go back to that page. We close all this stuff we don't need. And here we are. Start your test meeting. So if we click on this start meeting now link, it'll bring up, oh, here we go, more permissions. Yes, we want to open Zoom. And now it opens a test meeting, which doesn't have any people in it. Yes, we want to join with our computer audio so we can hear people. But we really want to test the speaker and microphone before we do that. Yes, I hear a ringtone. So I'm going to click yes. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, I heard a replay. Okay, we're ready to join with computer audio. So we're good to go. You'll see the controls at the bottom. We'll get back to those later because now we've done the testing. We're all set up. Let's try a real call. In any Zoom meeting, you're either the host who created the meeting or you're a participant who's joining a meeting someone else created. That's much more common, so let's try this as a participant. Here's an email from our friend Carly inviting us to join a Zoom meeting that she's set up. 
all we have to do is click the link in the email and it opens the link which takes us right to the Zoom app if we give it permission. Zoom opens up and there I am. Now I can choose to join with or without video. I'm going to join with video so the other people can see me and I'm going to join with audio so they can hear me and here we are in the Zoom call. So now let's take a look at how things work when you're in a call. Oh, there's Carly. You can see the other callers in little windows up at the top, and whoever's speaking becomes the big window in the middle. There are a bunch of controls along the bottom, but they disappear, and you just need to move your mouse to bring them back. Now, if I'm in a noisy space, and I don't want people listening to the background noise, I can click right here on the mute button, and that turns off my sound. I can still hear them, but they can't hear me. I can also turn off my video if I don't want people looking at me. The invite button right over here allows you to add people to the call in a bunch of different ways. You can just copy the link or copy the whole invitation. And you can also see the meeting password if you need it. Meetings have passwords optionally. That's a choice by the host. And you can share your screen. Click share. And now everyone can see my computer screen, including their own pictures. And when I want to stop sharing, I just click, oops, sorry, it's a little bit off, that stop sharing button right at the top that was red. Probably my favorite option is chat, which allows you to sort of pass notes in class during the meeting. You can send information to everyone or just to one person or a couple of people. You type right into the chat window and it shows up on the appropriate person's screen. So there's Carly waving back to us and I'm going to give her a little clap. Okay. So that's all you need to know about the basic controls. You can also record your meetings if you want to. So we're going to leave this meeting and move on to the next topic. Remember how we joined this meeting? It was through an email link. I'm going to close this window, which we don't need anymore. There's the email we started from. But there's another way to join a meeting. You can just open the app and click Join. To do that, you'll need the meeting ID, which is usually nine digits, and your name is already filled in and you just click join. So either of those ways work if you're a participant, but what if you want to host a call? You want to set up a meeting yourself. Open the app, you basically have two choices. You can either start a meeting immediately or schedule one, which is more common. So when you click the schedule button, you get a whole bunch of options. Most of them are very self-explanatory, like the date and time of the call. If it's a free account, you're limited to 40 minutes. Be aware of that. There's a whole bunch of options here, including whether to require a meeting password, whether people can be in a waiting room before the call starts, and so forth and so on. You can also use your personal meeting ID, which remains the same, or generate a new one automatically. Now, last thing. If I want to start a meeting right now on the spot, I click New Meeting, and I, do join, and I click Join with Computer Audio, and my meeting is live. Now, if I click this little button up here in the upper left-hand corner, there's all the information about this particular meeting. The meeting ID, the password if there is one, there's a URL, the link to the meeting, which I can copy by clicking there on Copy URL. Now, if I want to get somebody to join the meeting right now, I'm just going to text the meeting ID and password to Carly, and she can log right in with that information and her Zoom app, and there she is. So you don't need any more setup than that. You just start the meeting, send the information to the other participants, and you're ready to go. One final detail which can be useful when you have very large meetings. Notice how I'm small and she's large. If I click on this button, I can switch between gallery view and speaker view. Gallery view shows you everybody in equal size. Speaker view is what we've been seeing so far. So that's all there is to it. Thanks so much for watching. Sorry this was so long, but I hope it was useful. And please feel free to subscribe to our channel. Like this if you found it useful.